Thank you for joining me in this video where I'm going to talk about the potential for a major winter storm bringing impacts from heavy rain to heavy snow later this week. Let's get right into the details that you need to know. The big time storm system coming later this week is going to come as a result of changes to the flow of winds in the atmosphere or the jet stream. Let's play out this jet stream graphic so you can see how those changes are set to develop. Starting things out as we go just through the early part of this week, I want to point out the early week to midweek trend that's going to be happening in the jet stream. It's the fact that there's going to be no major dips coming down over parts of especially the central and eastern U.S. With the main jet stream flow rising up from parts of the southwest U.S. and then moving all the way up to the northeast, this southwest to northeast flow indicates kind of a ridge or a northbound push in the jet stream coming. That allows warmer air to rise up in the atmosphere and there will be warmer air rising up at the surface. Temperatures will be more spring-like than winter-like in many zones as a result of this pattern as we go through much of the week. Over time, we're going to get some changes moving into this ridging though. Look at the big trough or dip in the jet stream that's going to move into the ridge by the time we go towards the end of this week. Heading out of Wednesday and Thursday and into the early part of Friday, this big U-shaped dip called a trough is going to make its way out of part to the west and then on up into the central U.S. This is going to allow a cooler pocket of air in parts of the north central U.S. to push up against that warmer pocket of air in the east. As we get this battleground going, we're going to get one or possibly even two low pressure systems riding through that strong jet stream energy. Whenever you get cold air and warm air battling it out like this in the middle of winter, that is a recipe for not only a strong storm system or two, but also the potential for whatever systems that get going to produce snow on one side and then heavy thunderstorms with even severe weather on the other side in that warm pocket. We'll have to watch both of those threats pushing east as the jet stream pushes east at the end of the week and into the weekend. Now that you know the atmospheric setup that will result in our active weather late week, let's take a look at how that active weather is set to develop using some of the first timelines coming out of this blended future radar guidance. Pushing things out of Monday and into Tuesday on this timeline, one thing you'll note is dry conditions ongoing over most of the U.S. However, with the dips in the jet stream already starting to really come on down into parts of the West as early as the early to midweek time frame, parts of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana will be dealing with some high elevation snowfall Tuesday night heading into early Wednesday, for example. Other parts of the West, especially as you go up in elevation, will be dealing with snow and some gusty winds as we get that jet stream dipping, moving on through those zones, continuing out of Wednesday, Wednesday night, and at least through the early to mid part of Thursday. Eventually, you can see this L popping up around Texas and into western Oklahoma on this guidance. That indicates the first signs of low pressure with that dip in the jet stream, moving out of parts of the west and into the central U.S. So I am about to continue to play out this guidance, but I do want to make one point first. Yes, this is blended future radar guidance, and it's going to give a pretty good idea of impacts you can expect with this system later in the week. However, we are still about four to seven days out from the impacts out of the system. Therefore, it is not going to be perfect. Look at the overall trends in this guidance, not the exact spot where you see a rain snow line, for example. As we push things out of Thursday morning heading into Thursday afternoon with this guidance, one thing you'll note is that we are likely going to see a push of moisture moving up to the east of our jet stream energy and where that low pressure system will be moving into parts of the southern plains. That means that we'll have rainfall picking up out of parts of Texas and Oklahoma, extending as far north and east as parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio throughout the day on Thursday. As of now, the expectation is for there to only be one main low pressure system with this jet stream dip. That's what we're going to roll with as this guidance is indicating that for now. Pushing things out of Thursday night into Friday morning, that's when we will likely see the low pressure riding the jet stream energy and progressing to the northeast. This is where the system is going to be likely become more dynamic, with a warm front lifting north on its eastern side. Warm fronts develop on the east side of low pressure systems because they have a counterclockwise wind flow. That means winds are coming around like this, and in this case you're going to be getting quite the flow of warmer moist air, especially coming off the gulf by the time we go out of Thursday night into Friday morning most likely. That means that in that warmer pocket, any thunderstorms we get ahead of the colder front or where the cooler air will start spilling in is fair game to possibly even become on the stronger side. We'll likely have to watch that moving out of parts of the plains and extending towards the Mississippi Valley and the Ohio Valley at some point out of Thursday night through Friday and into Friday night. That's one impact we'll have to watch out of the storm. But also note behind that cold front, there will be cooler air spilling in as you'd expect. That could increase the chance for some snowfall to pick up, possibly even heavy snow. Nebraska, 
Kansas, maybe even as far north as South Dakota, Minnesota, parts of Iowa, you could be getting in on snow through Friday morning. And this guidance only indicates an increased chance for snow on the north side of the system as it pushes east into parts of Wisconsin and Michigan throughout the day on Friday. However, I do want to note, especially given that this is a system happening as we go out of January 8th into the 9th, this really is going to be a pretty warm based system and that means we're going to be looking at more in the way of the thunderstorm impacts over a broader span than the snow impacts which will be happening in a little bit more of a thin corridor. I think the timing on this will shift a bit but overall for right now it does look like we will see this system shifting east even more as we go out of Friday night into the early part of Saturday. By the time you're waking up on Saturday, there could be low pressure actually moving into the southern part of Canada with its cold front still extending back down to the south. Again, there's your warm front right here is your cold front. This is your warm pocket right here. So moving out of the Appalachians towards the east coast right now, it looks like Saturday would be your day for the best chance of some stronger storms in that warmer pocket. Eventually, the snow chances that will likely still be in parts of the Great Lakes throughout the night, Friday night into Saturday, will begin shifting into parts of the interior northeast, possibly concluding this storm with some heavy snow in parts of Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Even into the early part of Sunday, there could still be some lingering impacts and strong thunderstorms in parts of the Mid-Atlantic, as well as down to the southeast coast before that cold front fully passes through and dries things out. Overall, though, it does look like impacts will be done with the system by the time we go towards Sunday. Again, that was an overview of the future radar for the likely system using the blended model guidance. Now let's take a look at a comparison between the GFS and European models so that you can see why I'm not looking and relying on specific model outputs just yet. Here's your individual GFS model. It shows heavy thunderstorms and heavy snow out of the system. But if we look at the European model at the same time, it does not show the exact same positions and it shows a little bit more of a disorganized system. Again, there's going to be discrepancies in the models until we get to the exact event, and that's why using the blended guidance is the way I'm going for now. That is also why we're not going to take a look at any specific rain or snow totals expected out of the system at this point. We're now just going to go through an overall recap of the impact zones expected from snow to even the severe weather with this system from January 6th to 11th based on current guidance. Taking a look at the impacts expected using this custom graphic, you can see that first there will be low pressure with that jet stream energy in the west, that will help in bringing heavy high elevation snow, especially moving out of parts of Washington and Oregon, all the way down as far to the southeast as the four corner states in Arizona and New Mexico, for example. Eventually, we will get low pressure tracking to the east. There could be a mix of rain and snow transitioning to snow, or just a brief mix before things turn to all rain in parts of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the interior northeast. Overall, though, the only zones with the best chance for an all-snow event right now look to be in places like Nebraska, parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, and then maybe further back into the rest of the north-central U.S. Down south, rain and even severe storms look to be in the mix. If you're in those red zones from parts of Oklahoma and Texas, extending through other parts of the southern corridor and towards the mid-Atlantic, that's where I'm highlighting the best chance for warmer temperatures fueling up severe thunderstorms with this system. Again, though, the exact corridors have the best chances for tornadoes, for example. Those will not be known until we get a little bit closer to the exact event. With the overview for the inbound storm in mind, I do want to close this video with a look at just how spring-like temperatures are expected to be leading up to the event, especially through the early to midweek time frame from parts of the Rockies, stretching into the Plains, over to the Mississippi and Ohio Valley corridors and the Appalachians. Temperatures are going to be well above average. Those brighter reds, especially from Texas up to the upper Midwest, indicate where temperatures are likely going to be around 15 to 30 degrees above normal at least through the first few days of this week. Here's what those temperature anomalies will equate to in terms of actual temperatures for your area as we go into the early to midweek time frame. Before we get that big dip in the jet stream starting to come down and cool things back off in many zones, temperatures will be well above average ahead of our storm. Look at this, 50s, 60s, and 70s all the way as far north as Nebraska and South Dakota, Missouri and Illinois, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia on Monday. This is the time of year where you expect temperatures to be in the 30s and 40s or even below that, if anything, for highs in these zones morning lows should be well below freezing and in some cases they won't even drop below freezing in these zones during this big warm spell. In fact the warm spell will continue ahead of the system. Before it gets here Tuesday and Wednesday will continue to be warm days. All the way up here to the north central U.S. we'll have 50s around on Wednesday afternoon. In parts of the south central U.S. it is going to be in the 70s. Look at this from Texas and Oklahoma over to the Carolinas. 
oops, I left you out there in Florida, didn't circle you, but you're also going to be in the 70s at least on Wednesday afternoon. Some of these numbers, as indicated by those boxes, will be breaking record warm highs. Eventually, the system will start pushing into the picture. You can see how that will begin to cool things off over the north central U.S. as early as Thursday for the peak temperatures of the day. But south of where that warm front will be developing, temperatures will still be quite warm for the time being. 50s, 60s, and 70s for highs stretching from the Ohio Valley all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Look at this though, Friday, cooler peak temperatures will probably be during the early part of the day before they crash down as snow maybe moves into these zones. However, after the warm temperatures throughout the week, how much snow could really stick in the Midwest? That's a real question. I'll be answering more of your questions in the coming days as we get closer to that system. For now though, that's all I got for this video. Let's go ahead and recap those headlines I just discussed, starting with headline number one. A major winter storm risk is on tap for the end of the week with the biggest impacts possible Friday and Saturday. Impacts from snow to severe weather are expected to be factors. However, the exact snow track and snow totals with this system are very unclear for now, as are the potentials for tornadoes, gusty winds, hail, with any thunderstorms. Therefore, you should be staying tuned for new updates, and you can do just that by hitting that subscribe button and making sure you have those notifications on so you never miss when I post. Do me a favor as well, if you like this content and you have family that you think would benefit from having this information, hit that share button down below the video and share the link out. Get this information out to other people who might be interested, regardless of whether you do that or not. I appreciate you for tuning in. If you are interested in checking out weather model maps like the ones I use in my content, check out the free trial to Weatherbell that will be linked in the description. Other than that, that's it for reminders. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Hope to see you next time. One Nation Weather.